We often hear that in the past, the rulers of the Qing Empire believed that they were at the centre of a Sinocentric world order. But did they really think of their world that way? Some historians of China suggest that this idea is not really true. Why does any of this matter? It matters because in some circles at the moment we're hearing some highly politicised discourses about how the leaders of China today want to re-establish the Sinocentric world order which they lost when they lost the Opium Wars to the British in the 1800s. And supposedly they've wanted to re-establish ever since. If this idea about the Sinocentric world order under the Qing isn't really true in the first place, then this poses some real problems for that narrative we often hear about the rising China and their desire to re-establish this Sinocentric world order. Here's a diagram of how the Sinocentric world order is often depicted with the emperor at the centre representing the height of world civilization, and other states organised around China getting less and less civilised the further out from the centre they are. And it's important to remember, of course, that the literal translation into English of the word for China, Zhongguo, is Middle Kingdom, which really evokes this whole idea of the Sinocentric world order. Remember though that the Qing were actually Mantu, and they had conquered the previous Chinese rulers of the Ming dynasty, and taken over governing, and it's often assumed that they had adopted the classical Chinese customs and institutions in order to rule the Chinese empire. But some historians of China have suggested that actually this is not really how the Qing understood their own empire. In particular, there's a group of historians who have done a lot of work to revise conventional understandings of the Qing, producing what has come to be known as New Qing History. I'm going to now quote from Joanna Whaley Cohen, who I have quoted on this channel before, in fact. This is from a podcast called The Chinese History Podcast, uh, which I'll post in the video description below if you might want to give it a listen later. This is Whaley Cohen's take on the idea that the Qing Empire, in fact, was never based on a Sinocentric world order. She says, Let me say a little bit about the founding authors of New Qing History. And those include, especially, perhaps, Evelyn Rorsky, who was president of the Association of Asian Studies in 1996. And in her presidential speech, she set out her view, in a nutshell, that the Qing was actually a Manchu-centered empire that regarded China as only a part, albeit a very important part, of its empire. It was not a Chinese empire run by Manchus, but it was a Manchu empire of China and other regions. And that meant that many of the techniques of ruling that they used were drawn from Inner Asia rather than from China. And by implication, or rather quite expressly set out by Rorsky, this also meant that the reason the Qing had been able to control China for almost three centuries was not because they had become perfectly Chinese, taking over the mechanisms of Chinese bureaucratic rulership and adopting Chinese culture wholesale, although to a large extent they did that, but also because they did not do that. Instead, holding on to what they regarded as, or maintained to be, distinctive characteristics of inner Asian culture, including what we would now call multiculturalism. And what that meant, among other things, was that instead of regarding China as the centre of a series of concentric circles, each one of which was progressively less civilised the further away from the centre from China it got, in Rorsky's influential view, the Qing thought in terms of a multiracial empire that included not only Chinese, but also Manchus, Mongols, Tibetans, Uyghurs, and to a lesser extent, other nationalities. In other words, in this view, China was one constituent part of a multiracial empire governed by Manchus, largely based on Manchu institutions, not just Chinese ones. And this is a very different account from the Sinocentric world order, which we often hear about, and gives us perhaps a very different way of thinking about Chinese history. Thank you for watching.